Cushing's. Ah, describe a Cushing's patient to me. Moon face, buffalo hump. Go ahead. Trunkal obesity. Purple stria. Looks like a zebra. What else? How about their extremities? Thinning, wasting. Do you know you see Cushing's every day? Every day you see Cushing's. Everything you just described to me was right there. Every time. Now if your patient has them, please don't take a bite out of them. But ultimately, that's Cushing's right there. Everything you just described is right there. So every time you see an M&M, &M, it's Cushing's. Now, having said that, let's talk about it. There are three major types. Obviously pituitary, could be the lungs or the adrenals. That's all it is, there's three areas. Now when I use the word disease, I affect one organ. Syndrome affects many organs. Now let me, let me make one statement about that real quick. As I go forward and talk about all of the Cushing's, all of them as a group are called Cushing syndrome. Does everyone understand it? That's an umbrella name. Then when I subcategorize them, then we subcategorize them into, again, Cushing syndrome or Cushing's disease. So I need you to understand it. So let's go through this. Let's start with the first one. So when a patient comes in and looks like an M&M, what do you do? What do you do? Well, the first thing is low dose dexamethasone. <coughs> low dose dexamethasone. If it suppresses the ACTH pathway, stop reading, stop reading. It's either obesity, depression, or normal variant. Obesity, down regulation of receptors. Depression, remember, initially you get an up regulation by a rapid down regulation. And normal variant means we just don't know. We don't know. We don't know. So if I was able, if I was able to kind of change this a little bit, bring up my pen here, one second. Now, if I was able to change this, and what I mean by that is tertiary, where am I again? Hypothalamus, secondary, pituitary, and primary's organ of choice. So the adrenal gland here, we know that we have CRH, comes down, stimulates ACTH, which comes down, stimulates the adrenals to release cortisol. That cortisol feeds back on these pathways. Everybody good? All right, I didn't tell you anything that we haven't talked about already. So I'm gonna pick a fictitious number. Let's say it takes three cortisols to shut down this pathway. If there's a down regulation of receptors, sometimes more of the drug could overwhelm that receptor and stimulate. Does everybody understand it? So if I give dexamethasone, dexamethasone looks exactly like cortisol. It has the same shape, same size. It is not cortisol, it just looks like it. And it also is a steroid with the best CNS penetration. Dexamethasone is a steroid with the best CNS penetration. You know that, that's why we're going up to the pituitary. Now, based off of this, if I give dexamethasone, just a little bit, and it shuts down the pathway, then I know it worked. And if I give dexamethasone, and it's due to downregulation of receptors, what were your three answers again? Obesity, depression, normal variant. That's it, it's gotta be one of those three. All right, all right, now, if I give a low dose and it doesn't work, what would you think you'd do next? High dose, that's all it is. Remember in America, more is always better. So, remember low dose doesn't work, now I go to high dose. If low dose does not work, what is it not? There's your double negative. Obesity, depression, normal variant. Big letters right in the center of that screen there. Good, now, wait a second, hold on, hold on. But I'm gonna do high dose. If high dose works, it's one answer and one answer only. So let's, let's do this in a drawing. Okay, so we have three possibilities here, three possibilities. Number one, pituitary, that's not fragile X. Two, good, some of you are still awake, good, good. The lungs, and three, it could be the adrenal gland. All right, now, if, if pituitary, there's a tumor. Remember, it's anterior. Okay, so be anterior versus posterior. Now, anterior, if I start to release ACTH. 
start to release ACTH. Lungs, small cell, releases ACTH. Would you agree both of these go over to the adrenal gland and could stimulate that or there could be a tumor releasing cortisol. So let's try this now. If I turn around and have, remember on the bottom of your previous slide there, it says disease affects one organ, syndrome affects many. Disease affects one, syndrome affects many. So let's try this again. So if I have ACTH coming from the pituitary, how many places does ACTH go? How many organs do I have up there? One. So if I have a pituitary tumor, we would call that Cushing's what? Disease. Disease. If I have small cell carcinoma releasing ACTH, what do we call that? Cushing's what? Disease. If I have an adrenal adenoma kicking out cortisol, how many places does cortisol go? Everywhere, it's permissive. So what would I call that? Cushing's syndrome. Does everybody understand the name, names? You have to. But if I take all three of these together as a group, we call it Cushing's syndrome. Does everybody understand that? All right, so be careful with the names. Now, if I give a low dose and it works, what's your answer? Low dose. Obesity what? Depression or normal variant. Obesity, depression, or normal variant. If I give low dose and it doesn't work, we give now what? High dose. High dose. And if I give high dose and it works. High dose and it works. It is always a pituitary tumor. High dose, it is always, your answer is always a pituitary tumor. So now you have a patient, Kenny, who you did low dose, it didn't work, high dose works. What would you do next? I'm sorry? You do know what to do. I know you know what to do. Did we, did we figure out or suspect the location? If you give high dose, we, we know it's where? Say it again. It's where? Trust yourself. It's pituitary. If it's a pituitary, I have the area, right? So I want to see how much soft tissue is invaded, how much area is affected. So what are you going to do? Squishy. That's all it is. That's all I'm waiting for. See, it can't be this ridiculously simple, but it is. And that's all it is. Wait a second. Hold on. So now, what if I turn around, Kimberly? And I tell you, um, it's an elderly woman. What other complication could she have? Let's say high dose dexamethasone suppression test worked. She looks like an M&M. &M. And um, she may have another problem. She's 67. What other complications could she have? It's not on your sheet. You do. Where is this? Pituitary, what sits around it? Ah, so this would be a micro or macro adenoma in a 67 year old? Macro. Could it cause mass effect? Could it compress the optic chiasm? And what would she present with? Tunnel vision. Remember the bitemporal hemianopsia? Okay. So, what we talked about this morning, say how we're bringing it back into this? All right, good. All right now. Let's say you do low dose, it doesn't work. You do high dose, it doesn't work. What are the two answers you're down to? Small cell of the lungs or adrenal adenoma? What's your next step? ACTH or urine cortisol? 24 hour urine cortisol? ACTH. Or 24 hour urine cortisol? They're actually both correct. They're both correct. I got you on that one. All right, they're both correct. Let me explain why. Not cortisol, urine cortisol, but it's got a 24 hour urine. Because, Judith, if there's a lot of ACTH, doesn't that stimulate the adrenals? What would that do to urine cortisol? Increase. Increase it. If there's an adrenal adenoma, what would urine cortisol be? Increased. But because ACTH is not high throughout the day, it'll oscillate a little bit along with urinary cortisol. Um, that's why we do it over 24 hours. So either 24-hour urine cortisol, which will be step three, or ACTH levels for step one and step two. Does everybody understand that? You're going to measure ACTH levels. So 
Patricia, if ACTH levels are high, what would be your answer? What's your next step in management? Do a screening thing for me. Take a picture, it lasts longer. Oh. Well, we're going to do screening, so we'll do a chest x ray in this case. Okay, chest x ray. All right. Um, but wait a second. What if I tell you ACTH levels are low, Patricia? And what would be your next step in management? Take a picture, it lasts longer. I know you don't like taking pictures, but I get to. What do you want to do? You sure? Or am I right? But it's so squishy. Okay, you win. Okay. okay. Good. Uh, you got it, you got it. All right, so one last run through the whole thing. One last run through the whole thing. So a patient comes in looking like an M&M, &M, looking like an M&M. &M. First thing you do is low dose dexamethasone. Low dose dexamethasone. When you give them low dose dexamethasone, it should shut down the pathway. Negative feedback. Dexamethasone looks like cortisol. If it shuts it down, what are your three possibilities? Obesity, depression, normal variant. If it does not suppress, you go to what now? High dose. You give high dose and it suppresses ACTH. What's your answer? Pituitary adenoma. Next step in management? MRI. Let's take a look. We can't treat. We've got to take a look and see what's going on. If I do low dose doesn't work, high dose doesn't work, then what am I going to do? Measure ACTH levels. If ACTH levels are high, your answer is? Small cell. Next step in management? Chest x-ray. If I turn around and tell you ACTH levels are low, you're going to do what? Adrenal adenoma. Next step in management? CT. Why? Retroperitoneal. You got it. Man, this is all this is. This is all this is. So when you start to see these things, then it's not so bad. Folks, we've covered a lot of material with concepts and things like that today. But before I can let you go for the day, I gotta go over a couple of things. If I take a drug once a day, what can you tell me about it? It's fat soluble, right. How about twice a day? What if I take a multivitamin? How many times do I take that a day? Once, yeah. Are there fat components of that? What are they? ADE. K. Whoa, wait a second. So A you're telling me A is fat soluble? Hey, what, who has a greater chance of toxicity? Somebody thin or somebody fluffy? Fluffy. fluffy. We never say fat, we say fluffy. So it's the rule. Oh, it's the rule. So again, if somebody takes vitamin A who's a little fluffy, could they get toxicity of vitamin A? Yeah, yeah. yeah because let's say they didn't take vitamins for the last 10 years, but they figure they're going to catch up. And instead of taking one, they take 20 a day. Could they get toxicity? Yeah. yeah. And did you know that vitamin A stimulates cerebral spinal fluid production? It does, similar to cord plexus to make CSF, right? Okay, hold on a second. So what if I have a young woman who is ingesting a lot of vitamin A, who's a little fluffy, who has a high chance of toxicity because of the high volume of distribution, who will overproduce CSF and compress the optic nerve. What do we call that? Pseudotumor cerebri. Isn't that a fluffy woman with vision disturbances due to overingestion of vitamin A because it is fat? Soluble. That's important. Hey, wait a second, hold on. Are you worried about herniation with vitamin A over ingestion? Yes? Why not? Okay. Gino. Here's somebody's cranium. Frame and magnum. Let's put their brain in here. Lateral ventricles, foramen of Monroe, third, aqueduct of Sylvius, fourth, you know, you got the two Lushkas and Majandi, right? Okay. We also know that there is a cord plexus in each one of these that produce what? Cerebral spinal fluid. Under the control of what? Vitamin A. Everybody good so far? Which is the cofactor? So if these are producing CSF, you know, if these are producing a lot of CSF, would it make those ventricles larger or smaller? If they're going to make it larger, would it expand the brain or constrict the brain? It's going to expand. If I expand that brain, if I get bigger, does that mean I'm going to fit through the hole? You're not going to fit. So am I worried about herniation? No, but would I worry about compression? Anything between the brain and the cranium, the skull itself. That's why in pseudotumor cerebri, they crush the optic nerve. Follow me so far? 
oh, wait a second, wait a second. What if instead they have a rapid deceleration injury and they rip or rupture the circle of Willis? And if they rupture that circle of Willis, could they bleed around the brain? If they bleed around the brain, which way, way the forces would act on the brain? They would act in, and if forces act in on the brain, would that make that brain smaller? And if I make that brain smaller, am I worried about herniation? Is that why we work fast when somebody has a bleed in the brain to do a craniotomy to go ahead and get that pressure off? But if somebody has overproduction of CSF, am I worried about doing a craniotomy? Am I worried about herniation? No, I'm just worried about losing vision. Does everybody understand that? That's all that is. That's all that is. But would you agree it still comes down to vitamin A over ingestion? All right. So if a drug is fat soluble, how many times a day do they take that? Once a day, once a day, once a day. If they take a drug twice a day, what is that? Fat soluble. What's the chance of toxicity? What's the chance of uh, what's the volume of distribution? Oh man, really? Can't, cannot be this easy. Really? So then, in essence, if somebody's taking a drug, let's say because you've read about uh, one, two, three, seven, nine, QG seven, three, four, put out by Bristol Myers and Squibb. You've heard about that drug before, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Have you read about it? Oh, That's what I'm talking about. Because the new literature out on this drug says it should be taken once every 24 hours with a glass of orange juice. Is it fat or water soluble? It's fat soluble. What's its volume of distribution? All right, what's the chance of toxicity? Could it get in the muscle? Yes. Rhabdomyolysis? Yes. Could it get in the brain? Yes. Alter mental status? <gasps> Wait a second. Could it get into muscle? Yes. Okay, I know I reiterate myself. Could it increase my AST? Yes. My ALT? Yes. My GGT? Yes. Oh, man, wait, wait, wait. What would it do to bone marrow? So the white count would happen, would, would do what now? Yeah, could they get superimposed bacterial infections? Where? Pulmonary and urinary tract. What kind of imaging are you going to do? Chest x-ray and what other test? Oh, man, no way. This can't be this easy. There's no way. There's no connections in medicine. We must learn details and note cards, right? That's what it is. What brings a patient into your office to begin with? Uh, when you look at them, what do you see? The kidney and dyspnea. Hey, wait a second. When you look at their skin, it looks dry. Their hair feels? Oh, their nails are? Marriage. Marriage. What would bring a person in due to marriage? And how would they present? Weakness and shortness of breath. When you look at them, what would you see? To get you and? Ooh, wait a second. You look at her hair. It would look brittle. Is that why some on that wedding day, their hair's kind of out to here, freaking out. They're sticking on those plastic nails because their nails are what? Brittle. Oh, she's flipping up that dress for the wedding because what GI symptoms does she have? <laughs> Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Oh, my goodness. And when he, she goes to slide that garter off during the event, could you see petechia? Her up? You're like, what the hell is that? That's called ecchymosis. Oh, my God. And based off of that, Doc, what is she likely to die of that night on her honeymoon? Oh, see, it's right there. That's all it is. See? Man, medicine right there in front of you. Cool. Everybody have a great night. I'll see you first thing in the morning.